Good afternoon. You know, some of the research on cognition suggests that many of you are fritzing out by now. Um, so, uh, but what I wanted to say is that's okay. There are a couple of things I'm doing today that are different than what I usually do. I'm trying to wean myself off of using PowerPoint for all my talks so I don't have slides. And I'm going to be using some very personal examples of the lies we tell to illustrate it. So that's pretty terrifying, so I'm kind of terrified, so hi. All right, so when you have a software program or an app that isn't working, that isn't doing what you want or is getting in the way or doesn't seem to be achieving the goal, you might go to the developer website. And when you do that, you might find a place that says known issues. And if you're really lucky, your issue will be there. And if like the angels are singing, they'll have a workaround, right? One of the reasons that I bring this up is that we have a very specific nature, a very specific set of cognitive wiring, a very specific jerry-rigged brain that has multiple known errors that get in our way all the time, and they're especially powerful in the area of intergroup relationships and something like creating policies and implementing policies around health equity. So I could go on about you know, the two systems. Some of you may have read Kahneman's work. He talks about two systems. He talks about system two. He talks about system one. System two is the one that hopefully people are engaging. You're trying to focus. You're trying to think, right? But system one is probably controlling most of all of our behavior. And system one is always controlling our behavior. We know this, but we don't take it into account when we're developing policies or strategies. And we walk around all of the time pretending that we are not actually really influenced by things like automatic and powerful in-group bias. Okay, so system one is really old. System two is a latecomer. That's you know, reason, cognition. Uh, it has to do more with the kind of moral uh, and social thinking that we try to engage in. It's not only a, kind of late, but it's, it, it's pretty limited. Absorbs a lot of glucose, which is why everybody here, if you, have, if you had a cookie, maybe not. Seriously, I'm not kidding you. If you had a cookie, maybe not. But you may have already, you may have already had your glucose uptake, so you may not be able to recall anything now. Right? But it looks like they're filming. And I'm sure it's just rewind it, rewind it, play it over and over. Um, so I could talk about the cognitive errors we're making, but I'm not going to because I think we are too privileged around cognition, which allows us to avoid really core issues. We are wired very powerfully to care about people that this system one classifies as our in-group. And because of that, we lack empathy for people in our out-group. System one not only is wired to care about people that are in your in-group, but it's pretty stupid now in the way it's classifying that. It's very, has a very small inclusion criteria. I'm gonna give you an example, and I'm gonna give you an example about children dying. I have a really good friend. We were in a committee meeting, white people, only African-American, and she was sobbing, and she said, I can't do this today, right? And we're all saying, why, you know, what's wrong? And she, was ta she said, I can't tolerate this, and another child had been killed. Right. Another black child had been killed that day. Now, intellectually, we all care, right? System two cares, but our wiring didn't create that sense of pain and drive, none of us in that room. And this was a meeting of a diversity and inclusion committee, and this is my life's work. My father was a Holocaust survivor, this is all I care about. I didn't get it, but here's the good news, and this is why I'm bringing it up. This is fixable. We can do something about this, but we don't, and we're lying to ourselves if we say we're working towards health equity, and we don't do anything about this, and we don't use the workarounds. She started to cry. She's my in-group. This is just automatic stuff. I started to cry. I felt it, and because of that wiring, right, this isn't conscious. That wiring says she's my in-group. Now, everyone that's in her in-group is my in-group, and I... I felt it, I'm sorry, I felt it really powerfully. Now, when our African-American colleagues look at us and they're feeling that pain and we're not, 
That's really powerful, and we ignore it. There are a lot of ways that we can, we know this, we can do something about this. We can create inclusive categories. We can make ourselves all the common in-group, but we don't. And so the power behind the policies that drive us are weak. They are too weak. And we throw up our hands, and we wonder why nothing's happened, and we wonder why the policies aren't protecting people, but we know why. There's a whole literature on this that we're ignoring, and so that's the lie that I would say we're telling us, and I would encourage you to stop telling that lie, and let's own it. This is our nature. We didn't create ourselves this way, well, we kind of did, but so we're not responsible for the fact that it's there, but we're really responsible for doing something about it now that we know about it. So I invite you to learn more about it, and I invite you to start helping create a very safe environment where people can acknowledge what's really happening due to this nature and learn from it. If we can do that, we can probably create change a lot faster. So.